Okay, NXT TakeOver Respect. Show just finished about 10 minutes ago, give or take. And, um, you know, here's the recap and the re review, uh, basically. Um, the first two matches were the semifinals for the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, so uh, I'll talk about those uh, at the conclusion of the second, when I uh, conclude my summary of the second match. Uh, but the first match off was uh, Finn Balor and Samoa Joe taking on Dash and Dawson. And I uh, constantly made the mistake as to who Dash and who was Dash and who was Dosh, Dawson. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but early on, uh, Finn Balor was tossed out of the ring by uh, Dash, and uh, Joe had to start the match, even though uh, Balor wanted to. Uh, Joe hit the insecurity in the corner and managed to tag in Finn Balor. Uh, Balor hit the drop kick on Dash and Dawson as they both went out of the ring. And then he followed it with the somersault plancha on the outside of the ring onto Dash and Dawson. Uh, Balor tried to go for an early coup de grace, but uh, Dawson then chop blocked his knee, and uh, through the mess rest of the match, da uh, Balor was selling a knee injury. Uh, Dash and Dawson began working on Balor's knee. Furthermore, uh, Dawson tried to go for a figure four. Balor kicked him through the uh, kicked him out through the ropes, and Dash managed to take out Joe before Balor could get the tag. But eventually, Balor would get the hot tag to Joe. Joe came in, started clearing house. Hits the muscle buster on Dash, and then Balor hits the coup de gras, further injuring his knee. Injuring. Uh, for the three. And uh, it does it, and then they start wondering if uh, Balor's going to be able to finish for the match or not. Anyway, uh, then the second match for the Dusty Rose Tag Team Classic for the semifinals. Yeah, I said that. I'm running on everything here. Sorry. Uh, Jordan and, uh, Jason Jordan and Chad Gable against Baron Corbin and Rhino. Uh, Jordan and Corbin start things off. Um, early on, uh, Jordan uh, managed to flip out of a Corbin hip toss attempt. It was pretty cool. Uh, eventually, Rhino got tagged in, and Jordan hit Rhino with a T-bone face buster. That's when Gable tagged in. Uh, Gable tried to chain wrestle with Rhino. It didn't really work. Um, Jordan and Gable did manage to begin isolating Rhino very briefly, but, uh, and then Gable put Rhino in an arm bar where Gable was sort of sitting over the top rope. Unfortunately, eventually, uh, Rhino managed to work his way out and Gable dropped on his head on the outside of the ring. Um, and then that allowed Corbin and Rhino to isolate Gable. Uh, Corbin hits Gable with a big boot, but uh, Jordan distracted the ref. Uh, Rhino came in, he set up for a top rope splash, but missed it, allowing Jordan to get the hot tag from Gable. Uh, Jordan speared Corbin in the corner of the ring. Uh, eventually, uh, Gable tagged himself back in. Uh, Corbin hit Gable with a sidewalk slam, but Jordan broke up the pin. And uh, then Gable went for a tilt a roll into an arm bar, but Corbin managed to counter that into the end of days for the three count. Baron Corbin and Rhino advanced to the finals. And, uh, yeah, now this is where it is. Now, while both matches were pretty good, uh, each in their own unique way, uh, Corbin and uh, Rhino versus Jordan and Gable was a bit more of a car crash brawl than uh, uh, Ballard and Joe. Yeah, see? This is where it gets so tough. Ballard and Joe against Dash and Dawson, but... Um, it does kind of stink a little bit. It was a bit of a disappointment that we did not get a true tag team in the final of the tag team tournament. Instead, we just got yeah two uh, teams that were cobbled together at the last second and entered the tournament. So, like I said, I would have liked to at least one actual tag team had gotten into the tournament, but uh, the tournament final at least. Anyway, <laughs> uh, moving on to the third match. This is uh, Dana Brooke versus Asuka, uh, formerly Kana. Um, and Asuka basically dominated this whole match. Uh, early on, she tried to do the handshake, but Dana Brooke just smacked it away. Asuka put Dana through a series of rolling hammer locks to start things off. Dana eventually did manage to slap Asuka, and Asuka just responded with a smile. Uh, Asuka then began landing a series of kicks. Asuka locked on a Fujiwari armbar, and Dana managed to just reach the ropes. Emma then began distracting Asuka long enough for Dana to begin fighting back briefly, but then Asuka locked um, Dana into a ankle lock, and then 
basically did like a German suplex while doing the ankle lock. And then uh, Asuka locked on a jumping arm bar, and then eventually uh, Asuka locked on a cross-faced chicken wing, or she calls it the Asuka lock, and that caused Dana Brooke to tap out. Uh, early on, then at a point, uh, Dana tried to get a little, tried to get some revenge back and started disrespecting Asuka once again, and uh, basically got a big roundhouse kick to the face for good measure. And uh, as Asuka rolled out of the ring, she stared down Emma the whole time as she backed out and all up the ramp. Excuse me. Um, like I said, it was a good kind of dominant match, although this does probably knock uh, Dan Brooke down on the totem for the women's championship. Um, like I know Dan Brooke's not a good wrestler, but she's actually a pretty good character. And well, she finally fixed her hair. She got. A, she tried to do that. Uh, I think she tried to do that um, fad where it was um, dyeing her hair lavender. And unfortunately, the dye didn't take and it turned gray. Uh, she's more now. She's back more to being a platinum blonde. So. It's not as bad. Uh, anyway, moving on to our fourth match here, and that is Tyler Breeze versus Apollo Cruz. Um, much longer match than Apollo Cruz has been working. Uh, usually, it's just been the squash matches. Um, early on, uh, Cruz hit a big drop kick on Breeze. Uh, Breeze rolled out of the ring, and Cruz went out after him. But that allowed uh, Tyler to get a bit of an upper hand. But uh, they got back into the ring. And Cruz came back and hit a big vertical suplex and only got a two-count out of it. Uh, Breeze then pulled a roll-up maneuver, but it rolled Cruz outside of the ring through the ropes. Um, let's see. It's, sorry. Look at my notes. Uh, and Cruz landed on the outside of the ring, kind of tweaked his back a little bit, and this allowed uh, Breeze to start targeting Cruz's back. Uh, he locked him up in a sharpshooter, he locked him in a Boston Crab, he had a, a backbreaker, uh, he had a swinging backstabber. Uh, eventually, Cruz, uh, back, he had a big insecurity, but then Cruz, uh, Breeze, yeah, sorry, Breeze countered back with a supermodel kick for a two count. Uh, then uh, Breeze went up for the top rope, but uh, he tried to do a move, and Cruz countered that and do a big power slam. Uh, and then... Uh, Cruz did his power as a gorilla press. He went for a standing moonsault finisher, but Breeze countered that and, and rolled it into a small package. It was a really impressive maneuver, <laughs> uh, but only got a two count out of it. Um, then Breeze set Cruz up in the corner, went for a big splash, but Cruz came back out of the corner, hit Tyler Breeze with the big boot, then hit a belly-to-back suplex into the into a power bomb, basically, yeah. and that got the three count and the victory. Um, you know, it was a good match. Tyler Breeze is a good enough worker. Uh, don't know so much about that finisher. It, it, I know it was supposed to look impressive, but it just looked like uh, John Cena's belly-to-back suplex spin-out thing that he does. You know, which which, which is okay, but... Eh. <laughs> anyway, now we reach the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Final. Finn Balor and Samoa Joe versus Baron Corbin and Rhino. Uh, Balor was given the clearance to wrestle. Or, uh, just before the match, they said he was given the clearance to. Uh, Balor and Rhino started things off. Started things off, but he didn't really do. Balor really didn't do much. They just kind of tied up a couple times, and uh, eventually Corbin got tagged in. And uh, Balor then managed to land a couple drop kicks to tag in Joe. Uh, Joe came in and hit uh, Tyler Corbin with a series of forearms, or Baron Corbin, not Tyler Corbin. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Hit Baron Corbin with a series of forearms. Uh, but Corbin managed to counter and hit a big spine buster on Joe for a two count. Um, uh, but Rhino and Corbin eventually began to isolate Joe. Joe managed to hit a big insecurity and finally got to tag in Balor. Uh, Balor hit a couple of moves and then tweaked his knee, and he was standing on the ring apron, which allowed uh, Rhino to chop block uh, the uh, Balor's injured knee. Sorry. Whew. Uh, and then Corbin wrapped Balor's knee around the ring post. Uh, Corbin had a sidewalk slam on Balor for a two count. Balor managed to hit the sling blade and get the tag to Joe. Uh, Rhino gores Joe, but Balor managed to break the pin. Joe goes for the muscle, and eventually uh, Joe would go for the muscle buster on Rhino, and Balor would hit the coup de gras for the three. Uh, Balor's knee didn't seem measured after he hit that. <laughs> uh, anyway, the winners of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic... Finn Balor and Samoa Joe. 
And afterwards, uh, the Rhodes family came down. Cody, Dustin, uh, Dusty's two daughters, whose names has sadly escaped me. Uh, Cody's wife, Eden, and uh, of course Dusty's wife, uh, whose name also sadly escapes me at the moment. Uh, they came down, they presented the trophy. Uh, and it was Cody Rhodes, it was not Stardust. And uh, they basically you know, thanked everyone for the support they've been giving and... Uh, Cody came out and said, you know, tonight we were all members of the Rhodes family. So, uh, it was a nice little thing. Excuse me. And that leads us into our main event. The 30-minute Iron Man, Iron Woman, Iron Lady match for the NXT Women's Championship. Bailey versus Sasha Banks. Uh, right at the start of the match, the whole crowd was just chanting things like, Women's Wrestling, well, Women's Wrestling, or... You deserved it. Uh, early on, I did got to both competitors a little bit because I think that started the match a little bit slower than they intended. Um, early on, Sasha tried a series of roll-ups. Uh, Bailey countered with a series of roll-ups. Uh, Sasha had a big drop kick. Uh, Bailey had a belly-to-back suplex. Sasha hit a tornado head scissors. Uh, Sasha hit a top rope monkey flip. I'm going to try to see if I can do a 30-minute match in less than 30 minutes here. Hopefully I will. Uh, that doesn't mean I'm skipping a, lot, a few moments out, but it's not too bad. Um, let's see, where was I going? Uh, top rope monkey flip. Sasha goes for a bang statement, but Bailey counter tried to go for a belly to belly. Sasha counter out of that. Uh, Sasha tried using the ropes for... Sorry. Sasha tried using the ropes for leverage, but the uh, ref caught it out of the corner of his eye, so he didn't count the pin. Uh, Sasha got up and kind of mirrored enough of the ref to thumb Bailey in the eye, uh, roll her up, get the first fall. Uh, then Sasha set Bailey up for a corner knee stomp maneuver. Um, Bailey countered out of that. Bailey hit a belly to back suplex, got the second fall. Uh, then they got to the outside of the ring. Uh, Sasha grabbed Bailey and swung her head first into the ring steps. Then Sasha took Bailey, took her all the way up to the top of the ramp, and threw her into the big LED screen that was at the top of the ramp. And uh, this resulted in a count out, so the second fall went to Sasha. Or the second fall victory went to Sasha. It's now two to one. Uh, but Sasha got Bailey back into the ring, locked Bailey in a Boston Crab, but Bailey somehow made it to the ropes. Uh, Bailey hit a Hurricane Rana into a roll up and got the second or the fourth fall, evening it at two falls apiece. Uh, Bailey suplexed Sasha into a tree of woe and then hit a springboard elbow drop. Sasha tried to spear Bailey in the corner, Bailey dodged out of it. Bailey smashes began smashing Sasha's hands into the ring steps, a la what Sasha did to Bailey during the NXT Takeover Brooklyn special. Uh, Bailey smashes Sasha's hands on the ring steps. I said that already. Uh, then Bailey set up the ring steps, hit a running clothesline off of the ring steps onto Sasha. Sasha whipped Bailey back into the ring steps. Bailey came in and hit a Bailey to belly on the outside of the ring. Then Bailey hit a top rope Bailey to belly, but Sasha. Got to her feet, or got her feet on the ropes. That's what happened. She rolled. They rolled so far that Sasha was able to get to the ropes. And then uh, Sasha, or no, Bailey managed to set Sasha up. She was going for the top rope uh, reverse Frankensteiner again, but Sasha managed to roll out of it. She hit Bailey with the Bailey to belly and then locked on the bank statement, but she couldn't quite get her hands completely locked. Bailey kept fighting and fighting. Bailey rolled out of it, tried to go for a maneuver, but ba Sasha rolled back into it and locked on the bank statement again, but she couldn't quite completely lock it on. Eventually, Bailey broke free. Bailey grabbed Sasha and locked her into the old uh, Rings of Saturn submission hold, tweaking Sasha's hands that she had damaged on the ring steps earlier. And with just four seconds left, Sasha gives up. Overall, Bailey wins the, the Iron Woman match three falls to two. And after that, uh, the entire NXT roster came out and gave them a big standing ovation. Uh, Triple H and Stephanie came out and presented uh, both women with bouquets. Uh, Sasha was in tears as she walked up the ramp and got the flowers, and you know everyone was hugging her. And then Triple H came down to the ring to give Bailey the flowers. And the whole time the crowd was chanting, "Women's wrestling, 
You deserved it. And this is awesome. And it was very awesome. Uh, not quite as good as the NXT TakeOver Brooklyn match, but it was still a very good match. Uh, the problem with Iron Man matches is you either do the Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, no falls until the last possible second match, or you do the as many falls as you can, and with 30 minutes it's like, uh, I think the 3-2 to two victory works fine out of it. Uh... Like I said, it didn't quite have the greatest atmosphere to the Brooklyn match, really because I was in the Barclays Center, it was such a big arena, and uh, the crowd going well for that seemed a bit more substantive, but this was still very good, still worth your while. If you haven't watched it already, I don't know why you haven't. Get the network, your first month's free, not shilling for it. Uh, anyway, obviously, the next... Uh, Wrestling recap will be uh, Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. That'll be, well, that's on the 25th of October. Uh, the next video, of course, will be the uh, Day of Vengeance review. I finished scripting that. I've got the scans all ready to go, so, you know, I just need to shoot the on-camera segments and record the voiceover, and, you know, we'll be ready to go on that. So, see you next time.